So now that we've built our wonderful little home network, let's take a look at how EIGRP is functioning. All we've done so far is just configure EIGRP on all the interfaces. So we've not really looked at any of the internal workings of EIGRP. And so we'll do this on various routers throughout the network. First, we'll start over here with Jade because that just happens to be the console I'm on. So we'll do show IP EIGRP and we can see the interfaces, neighbors, topology, traffic, or VRF. And we won't cover VRF here, but we will look at the other options. So let's do show IP EIGRP 100. Let's see what options are available. So we can see just the interfaces, neighbors, topology, or traffic for AS100. In this case, if we hit enter, obviously we have to specify one or the other. So we'll do show IP EIGRP neighbors. And this shows us that we have two neighbors for Jade. Now let's step through all the information that we've gotten here just so you know what we're looking at. This first column is the handle, and that's just an internal number that's assigned by the router to determine one host from another. We have the address, which is the IP address which we know the neighbor on. In this case, we're over here at Jade, so we have neighbors of both Beck and Dave. We have the interface, which is the interface we know this neighbor on, so we know that 192.168.1.21 is off fast Ethernet 01. And if we look over here in the next column, we have the hold time. Now this hold timer will constantly count down until we receive a new hello packet. As I've mentioned, EIGRP sends out hello packets every so often. And this hold timer is a function that allows EIGRP to determine when a neighbor has gone down. If this hold timer ever gets to zero, then that means I've not received a hello packet from this neighbor in 20 or 30 seconds. And so I'm going to say that he's down. I'm going to flush all the routes that have that guy as the next hop out of my table. And I'm going to try to find new routes for the networks that used to go through him. We have the uptime, which is how long we have been receiving routes from this guy. In this case, it's a little over eight minutes. The source round trip time in milliseconds. How many milliseconds does it take to get to each of these IP addresses? In this case, because it's an emulated network, these source round trip times are very high. On a production network, you generally would see SRTT times around 10 or 20. The RTO column is the retransmission timeout. Basically, this is a number that's calculated by the router that says if I have to talk to this guy using a unicast, i.e. if for some reason my multicast fails and I have to talk with him directly using a unicast to this IP address, this is how many milliseconds I'm going to wait for acknowledgement of that unicast. The queue count is exactly what it sounds like. The number of packets that are queued for this particular host. Normally on fast links, that queue count should always be at zero. If you have a really slow link, like a 56K or 128K ISDN, you might see numbers in the queue count column. But so long as they're not constantly climbing and they're not in the hundreds, then you know EIGRP and the link is working as it should. And the sequence number is the sequence number in the EIGRP hello packet as received from this neighbor. So that's the neighbor table in a nutshell. Let's look at the next table that you generally look at when you're doing troubleshooting, which is the topology table. So we'll do show IP EIGRP topology. And here is a list of all of the routes that this router knows about and the feasible distance and advertised distance for those routes. Now you'll see for most of these, we have a single successor. So there were no feasible successors for most of these routes. We've got one down here at the bottom and we'll look at that in a second. But let's look at this route here, for example. The P means that the route is passive. Now, in EIGRP, if a route is passive, that means it's working as it should. I'm sending traffic back and forth for that route. Everything's hunky-dory and life's happy and grand. If this router were to go down, if 192.168.1.13 were to ever go down, this route would go active, meaning that I can't get to what used to be the next hop. Does anybody else out there know a route to the 10.10.30.24 network? So EIGRP would send out these query packets to all of its neighbors saying, do you have a route to this network? And they would reply back and say, yes, I have a route to that network. Here's my advertised distance. So for this network here, 101030 has one successor's feasible distance, which is the distance that I calculated for the metric, is 156160. It's via 192.168.1.13. There's my feasible distance, 156160. There is the reported distance as being reported from 192.168.1.13.
So you can see obviously the reported difference is lower than my feasible distance because that router is one hop closer to that network. Now again for most of these we have one successor. We have two successors down here for 192.168.1.16. Now 192.168.1.16 is this link here between Dave and Beck. So from Jade's perspective it's just as quick to go through Dave to get to this network as it is to go through Beck to get to that network because they're both two hops away. So you'll notice that the feasible distance is 30720. There's the feasible distance for both of these neighbors and the reported distance is also the same because each of those neighbors is directly connected to that network. And if we go down through the rest of the table you'll see that that's the only network we have two successors for. And so that pretty much covers all the EIGRP tables. In the next video we're going to manipulate some of the traffic parameters and see what happens to our distances in EIGRP.